All aboard! All aboard! Ah, well, hello there. So, you're getting on this train, huh? You know, I've been conducting this train for a good couple of years now. Been through a lot with her. I remember the I got nothing up my butt incident back in 2019. There was also the Florida man who threw a Bible at a police officer. Oh, and don't get me started about the year 2020. Oh boy. <laughs> so listen, if you're new here, I gotta read this uh, this piece of paper for you. It's sort of a sort of a legal thing, you know. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Warning, the following show may feature some adult language and adult scenarios that are not suitable for those under the age of 18 to 21 years old. If you are under this age, please consult your parents and or legal guardians for permission to listen to this show. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Well, with that out of the way, will you still be getting on? <laughs> Excellent. Well, let me just punch your ticket for you. And welcome to Trademark's Trainwreck. Good evening, passengers, and welcome to tonight's episode of Trademark's Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. It's just me and uh, Sherlock here tonight. How are you tonight, Shirley? Doing all right. Well, I'm exhausted. Today, work was, uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah. can't yeah. really get into it because courts, but, you know. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. I had a bit of a long day myself. Uh, for those wondering, uh, yeah, Greymane couldn't make it because he was, quote, waiting on brain swab and room admission. I, Not I, really sure what brain swab means. I assume this is in relation to his uh, constant battle with his foot, though how that's related to a brain swab, I don't know. I guess we'll find out next week. If he's, uh, if he's feeling so inclined to share. So... Funny, funny thing I found out about when I just got home today after uh, working at the courthouse. So, so, sorry folks, this is going to get slightly political, but it is, um, it has a very funny and happy ending. Now, um, Do tell. I'm going to link, I'm going to link trade the uh, article here so he can, uh, uh, I don't, you, do you link this in the uh, YouTubes, right? Oh yeah, I uh, put all the links to all the articles we talk about in the YouTube description in the YouTube video. So yeah, I can, I can put this up for you. Excellent. So um, this happened in Philadelphia here, just uh, July 3rd, just right before July 4th. So this is the first time we've heard of it. Um, uh -huh. And there are several videos and they're great. So what apparently happened was in Philadelphia, around 150 white supremacists and fascists with a group known as Patriot Front, um, based out of Texas, wearing khaki um, slacks blue shirts and masks, waving Trump flags and America first flags, and basically shouting all this stuff of like regaining, um, God, I mean, like just pick a, pick a white supremacist theme and, st and just, you know, that yeah. that's their theme, reclaiming the white race. There are a dime a dozen these days, honestly. And they had shields and all this stuff is really stupid. Um, and, so Philadelphia, none of these guys are from Philadelphia. 
It's like <laughs> reclaim America. America is not for sale. And this is this is what they do. Apparently, they they go around. They pick up like a bunch as many members as they can. They drive to um, very blue cities, very democratic cities, and march to like you know start some shit. Well, the city of Philadelphia was not happy at all. After they found out about the marches, because they were not warned ahead of time, but after they found out about the marches, um, the citizens of Philadelphia started to uh, basically gather around them in a counter protest, shouting at them, um, insulting them, you know, cursing at them. And then eventually, because this is fucking Philadelphia, you know, the birthplace of America, I'm sorry, Delaware, I know you were the first state. But Philadelphia is where the Declaration of Independence was signed. All right. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, that's where America, that's where like the first, the first like declaration of being a traitor to the British crown happened. Um, now, police were present, but they didn't really get involved with the counter protesters because after the counter protesters started, you know, insulting them and jeering them on. Um, a few scuffles started, um, and so the marchers tossed smoke bombs and then used that as a cover to hit and kick counter-protesters. So according to witnesses, this isn't confirmed, but according to witnesses, the white supremacists started this. They threw smoke bombs so they could use it as a cover from police and anyone filming to start attacking counter-protesters. Well, well again, the, the counter-protesters, the Philadelphians, were not having that. So eventually, they started fighting back. And they fought back so well that these wannabe uh, fascist militants got ran out of the city. <laughs> now, here's a really funny thing. This group of people um, like to think they're military. They've got these plastic shields. They look kind of like really wannabe riot shields. But here come a bunch of Philadelphian residents. They're just grabbing the shields, ripping them out of their hands, and just clocking them in the face. Like, you can see all these videos. Um, they're part of this link that I sent trade. and. And they're all very dumpy and dopey looking. Like <laughs> those, those shirts do not hide. Those, those shirts don't do any gravy. Like those shirts don't hide you very well, boys. Gravy seals. Um, <laughs> and they pushed them all the way back to their transportation. We find out later that this is what they had done. They rented a bunch of Pensick moving trucks, and they basically transported all these guys in these moving trucks. Now that's where the story hmm. should end. But it got even funnier <laughs> after the fact. So later on, Pensake, uh, the company, tweeted, We do not condone this. We, uh, as a company, do not support fascism or white supremacy. We will be looking into this to find out who rented these trucks. We also would like to point out that it is a federal offense to transport human beings in the cargo compartment of these trucks. <laughs> Whoever actually was on the rental agreement for these vehicles will now be blacklisted, and we will be sending it to our affiliate. We will be sending it to other rental companies, such as U-Haul and uh, whatever other moving companies there are that do this kind of stuff. These guys are... Don't get me wrong, folks. Like, this is funny. This is hilarious, because it makes them... It makes these people out to look like what they actually are a bunch children. of fucking children a bunch of absolute cowardly children and i'm totally fine with making them look like idiots but the thing yep. is they're also dangerous because they the fact they exist and the fact they recruit and the fact that they're trying to be violent makes them a potential danger so this is not something to take lightly. Yes, laugh at their idiocy and their stupidity, but this is not something to take lightly. We have to be aware of these kind of people. We have to be aware of what they can do. Well, I think the citizens of Philadelphia did here was great. It was very brave, and it was on a united front. And yep. It kind of proved that these people are just terrified of actual reprisals. But be careful, because some of them are more than willing to pack heat. So, I again, you guys know me. I'm fully in support of the idea of punching a Nazi in the face. My grandparents did it, Captain America does it, and if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Amen. Punts a Nazi in the face today. Captain will be proud of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, typically we don't delve into the uh, political aspect of uh, society in this show, but... 
this is just such a fucking stupid fucking story. Just these <laughs> these doughy looking boys just rolling up and going, America! Oh shit! <laughs> just getting punched in the face and then being forced to leave their Toys R Us riot shields behind, rolling away in their Penseki uh, trucks or however you pronounce it. <laughs> Pensek, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, it, it's a dangerous world out there with all this uh, shit going on, and I'm glad that uh, people are actually taking a stand against this bullshit, because we lived with this for the last four years, and I think everyone's just tired of it at this point, except for the people that didn't get a fucking clue yet. Ah, moving on, though. Moving I on. I think it's time to get into the more comedic news, which... Means it's time for my obligatory spiel as to what the flying fuck this show is. When we aren't uh, bashing uh, people on the wrong side of politics, we talk about all the dumb news that I've uncovered over the past week or so, and we go into the softcore material and the hardcore material, each with their own music break right beforehand, one of which is coming up right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Trademark's Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time, except when it's every day is Punch a Nazi Day. So what was that about gray in a hat? What about Mrs. Gray Man in a hat? <laughs> yes, welcome back to Trademark's Train Wreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fan all the time, except when it's brought to you by Mrs. Gray Man and her free gambling hat. <laughs> Get yours today. Call 555-5555. <laughs> we Not apo- valid in Florida. We apologize to the missus. That was a request. The missus is actually a frequent uh, a frequent viewer of the show, which I very much appreciate. Anywho, let's actually get to the actual content of the show. So as we all know, last week was uh, National Traders Day, a.k.a. the 4th of July. And with the 4th yeah. of July, there comes all sorts of events. Because... There are a lot of idiots out there with flammable objects that can explode. Mm Mm-hmm. What better way to celebrate America's independence than by blowing some shit up? Yep. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of a gimme with us. I mean, mean, England celebrates the closest thing they got by burning a man in effigy who Mm -hmm. dared stand against Parliament. Yeah. A very... (laughs) Not very well deserved, actually, when you actually take a look at Guy Fox's actual fucking plan. Like, V for Vendetta really paints it up as, like, this grandiose fucking thing reincarnated in the modern century. But when you actually take a look at it, it's like, why do we celebrate this again? <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing a lot of people forget about. Um, not to get too much into history, folks, sorry. But um, Guy wasn't the only one. Guy was the only one that got caught. Now he it's eventually true. he eventually gave up his co-conspirators, but he was not only the one who got caught; he was also the only one who was actually doing something. Because everyone true. was supposed to bring in massive barrels of freaking gunpowder under the yeah the tunnels of Parliament to sink it, and it probably would have worked if they actually got the amount they needed. But somebody turned tail on Guy. Somebody like gave up the plan, they captured Guy, and they tortured him until he gave everything up. So, yeah, England, your version of 4th of July and, you know, November 5th is kind of fucked up. A yeah. lot like most of your holidays. Yeah. For more info, take a look at uh, Overly Sarcastic Productions' uh, Dumb Moments in History, was that it? Mm, I think so, yeah. Anywho, back to the matter at hand. 4th of July. Ah, uh, we have an incident that happened on the 4th, because of course we do. Mm-hmm. July 7th, 20, 2021. Doorbell camera catcher, uh, catches ding-dong ditcher setting off fireworks on stranger's doorstep. Oh, good boy. 
Welcome to the flaming dog poop gag. Now evolved. Yeah, now times... Now times ten. Hmm. Golden Gate Estates, Florida. It's not uncommon to hear fireworks in the middle of the night during Independence Day weekend, but having one go off right on your doorstep sure is bizarre. File that under the category of no shit. It is the 4th of July. They do uh, they do have fireworks. It is legal, but you don't do it in front of someone's doorstep, Bobby Kelly said after hearing his neighbor woke up to a video uh, which shows a person ringing her doorbell then running off to a light uh, to a to light a firework in her in her yard. I'm sorry. This this article is a little bit fraught with uh, some typos and shit like that. So my brain is kind of struggling here. Like I'm reading this one sentence here, which shows a person ringing her doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> you can ring my doorbells anytime. Anyway, <sighs> Ew. I'm sorry. It's just like. <laughs> Fucking typos. They make they make my brain fucking strangle itself. <clears throat> if he were to come to my home and do that, it would be pretty scary for my wife, grandson, grandson, dog, and myself, and uh, and my neighborhood. I like how grandson dog doesn't have a comma between the two words, so it's like grandson dog. This is uh, this is just fraught with horrible grammar. Yeah, come I can on. already tell. Where where who the fuck wrote this? Chandler Blackman. Of the N- of NBC two, fucking get a spell checker. Step up your game, please. What, yeah, what the hell? Where's your editor? Yeah, come on, man. Uh, other neighbors who live nearby said they were surprised when they heard what happened. They said that those responsible should be held accountable. No shit again. Yeah, just like I've got a I got a video here. Of course, of course I do because. We can't go one year without an incident with fucking Fourth of July where something goes wrong. Thankfully, this is one of the uh, one of the least deadly incidents. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 looking at the uh, the video now. It we've got what appears to be. I think this is just a teenager who was uh, forced to do like a prank or some shit. Because like the video is real quick. We have basically a guy comes into the porch, rings the doorbell, and just fucking hightails it down the street. He's barefoot and doesn't have a shirt on, and down the road where he's heading, a firework just goes off. Not like straight into the air, but like it just spins around and lands on the ground right in front of him. That might be his friend waving around something. Oh, God. So, yeah, it's very very likely this is a... A fucking dickhead doing a prank because he was forced to or some shit. Well, maybe not forced to. Maybe he did it willingly. Just gave in to peer pressure. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, everyone in Golden Gate's Florida keep uh, Golden Gate Estates. My bad. Keep an eye out uh, for uh, some punk kids doing some shit. I guess. Uh, Moving on. Oh, we have a more uh, detailed case right here. Another Fourth of July incident. This one not relating to uh, to fireworks, but rather to a person who tried to evade arrest. Nothing really uh, spectacular there, but then you take a look at the vehicle that they use. Fourth of July parade participant tried to evade arrest on tractor. <laughs> oh, yes. The ultimate vehicle. High performance, high octane. I hear that's that... how you get out. Of... Hmm. That's how you get away from the cops. High high speed pursuit, right there. Yep, I hear that's going to be in the next Fast and Furious movie. They're all going to be on uh, fucking tractors. <laughs> Talk, talking about family for the next two hours. Anyway, so quick side note: What the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm on. I, I regrettably still have a Facebook page, and I scroll down, and all I see are fucking memes of fucking Vin Diesel talking about family. I know it's ridiculous. It's like, God damn it! I can't even. I I can't even escape it in a, in a fucking Transformers uh, group because <laughs> my friends are uh, fucking memesters. I love them, but God damn it. Anyway, 
Rockwall, Texas. A participant in a 4th of July parade in Rockwall was taken into custody Saturday after refusing to cooperate with officials and trying to evade arrest by driving a tractor. Police said that the woman, 61-year-old Lori Bostick, was causing a disturbance at around 11.30 a.m. at a staging area of the city celebration. Officials decided not to allow her on the public on the parade route. According to the police, Bostick ignored parade officials and of and officials. Bostick ignored parade officials and oh, t- duh, she she ignored officials and officers. My bad. Uh, she tried to rejoin the parade on her tractor. Police said she was operating it in a dangerous way, which led to officers trying to stop her near. T.L. Towson Drive and Justin Road. She refused. Trail. Hmm? Oh, trail. T.L. is trail. Trail Towson? That's okay. Well, it's probably, to be honest, it's probably a typo. It should have been Towson Trail. Maybe. I don't know. She re- she refused to stop and tried to evade officers on the tractor, police said. She was eventually forced off the road and into a fence, disabling the tractor. The 61-year-old was arrested and booked into the Rockwell County Jail for evading arrest, interference with a processional, and disorderly conduct, and criminal mischief. Apparently, she also took a little bit of a tumble because, as we can see in her mugshot there, she's got a little, just a little bit of a crack on her nose. Mm. Probably smacked her face on the steering wheel. Tractors aren't really known for their, uh, you know, safety. Known for their airbags. Yeah. This is this is another case of how did we get here? What what happened here? Like we don't know. Well, I mean, okay. So looking at the video, this woman like just was so patriotic. I mean, look at her hair. She dyed her hair blue and red. She was wearing a blue and red. Yeah. You watch the video, you can see it. Oh. I will have to refresh the video then. Because I'm only looking Damn. at her mugshot. They must have washed her hair. That explains the towel on her mugshot, actually. Okay. Uh, do go on. So, all patriotic up and probably up on something else. I doubt she was sober when she did this. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean... She she's very much in America mode. Like she's got she's got little American flags on her on the rear wheels of her tractor. She's a little too much enthusiasm, which you know it's nothing new. Yeah, it's been happening. It's been happening for hundreds of years. It's the fucking Will Smith meme. Yeah, I like this boy's energy. He's a little confused, but I like his energy. Like, you're free to be as patriotic as you want, but when it interferes with something that has been planned months ahead, like something that has been extensively planned by people who know better than you, that's when it starts to get a little bit detrimental, because you can't, you can't randomly just ram your vehicle into a parade and go, yeah, 4th of July! Fucking Christ. Yeah, it's a little a little risky and a little selfish, but more than likely they'll release her and probably they'll release her in the OR and probably just, you know, have her ch- charged a fine. Maybe she'll get a misdemeanor or something. I mean tractor violations are their own special type of thing. You, know, you can't even call them like it's technically a moving violation, but just barely. I I guess. Still, though, it's just there is such a thing as overly patriotic. Yeah, look at the first article I talked about. Mm hmm. It's patriotic in the wrong way. Yeah. Anywho, moving on from uh, 4th of July and being patriotic, this is our last softcore article, and I think uh, <laughs> there's just something. Well,. I'm going to let you stew on this, Sherlock. California Highway Patrol tickets driver with apparent SpaceX Starlink dish bolted to car hood. 
Really? Yep. I got pixies. So he's got he's got a uh, he's got a radar dish attached to the hood of his car. Oh yeah, just sitting there, sitting there, right on the fucking hood. Let's find out why. This happened July second, two thousand twenty-one, when a California Highway Patrol officer pulled over a vehicle on uh, that Friday. And th- and that car had a satellite dish bolted to the car's hood, and the device appeared to be one of SpaceX's Starlink antennas. Sir, I stopped you today for that visual obstruction on your hood. Does it not block your view while driving? CHP of Antelope Valley wrote in a Facebook post about the incident. CHP added that the motorist replied, Only when I make right turns. Well, I mean, he okay then? <laughs> I guess he. Can, I guess he can't. I guess he can't drive for NASCAR. <laughs> no, that's left turns. I think he's fine on that. In that case, unless they oh, decide right. to go they backwards, are le- <laughs> they are left turns. Mm. Uh, a representative of the law enforcement uh, agency told the local news that the motorist driving a Toyota Prius received a ticket for a moving violation. The motorist told CHP that they used the antenna to get Wi-Fi service for a business they operate out of the car. Okay, bullshit. Oh, they're so stupid. No, that... <laughs> like... Elaborate, please, because I, I know next to nothing about Wi-Fi except that it helps me right. with my phone. So... Wireless signals, and Gray would be able to explain this a lot better. Wireless signals are kind of bounce around everywhere. They use cell phone towers to basically um, run run their lines off of it. So your modem, um, it either will use a cell phone tower or it will use hard line Ethernet Ethernet lines or the telephone lines if they're really old. Um, they go, you know, the signal goes to a modem and then goes to a wireless uh, transmitter. Those could be again cell towers your wireless uh your wireless transmitter that's plugged into your plugged into your uh, home system for your uh modem or even cell phones now the spacex satellite dish is um i don't know how advanced it is because it's supposed to According to this, it's designed to deliver high-speed internet to consumers anywhere on the planet. But but it's I'm just here's the thing. It's just moving makes it difficult to get a fucking signal. Yes. So I don't know if it would work. I mean, we have developed antennas and receivers that actually go onto cars that can, you know, get good signal while they're moving. But here's the thing. Those antennae are usually inside a dome-like structure that sits on top of the roof, not the hood, and has a nice plate of... uh, heavy steel sheeting between it and the driver because it kind of does give off a, a fair amount of rats. Mm-hmm. So um, this is re- one really da- dangerous, not just for this, for not being able to see what you're pointing at, like where you're driving, but also for the fact you've probably given yourself like a lethal dose, like a prolonged levels of ra- radiation poisoning from this. Yep. More than likely. I mean, what the fuck was this? Did it does it even describe this guy's logic behind this? Like, I mean, put it on the hood. You you do, you didn't want to put it on the trunk, not the trunk, not the roof, the hood. And on top uh... of that, you operate a Wi-Fi business out of that. You need to like, does the business operate like totally on its own, totally independent of things, or? Do you have to be looking at your phone while you're driving to do something? I have so many questions about the stupidity of this of this uh um of this business and this person. I don't think they'll be answered. 
I'm taking a look around because the initial article I found goes on to describe uh, the Starlink kit and all that. Oh, here we go. Uh, the Starlink is the company's capital-intensive project to build an interconnected in internet network with thousands of satellites known in the space industry as a constellation designed to deliver high-speed internet to consumers anywhere on the planet. And basically, the kit that this guy had was an, uh, it had four parts, and for $99 a month, uh, to, oh no, that's completely unrelated, yeah. Uh, the, basically, that article goes on to describe all the shit about the fucking system. Let's see here. Uh, and I love that representatives for SpaceX did not immediately respond to the uh, local news requests for comments. Here we go, here we go. Here's more information about the actual fucking case. The Highway Patrol said it, it, it was illegal to mount a satellite dish on the hood of a vehicle sighting section 2670882. Oh, fucking Christ of the California Vehicle Code. Drivers are also prohibited from hanging items from a rearview mirror or mount a GPS or cell phone in an unapproved area of the vehicle's windshield. Okay. I, mean, I have a I, feeling more than one person has done this. I mean, I, I get it, especially with the GPS or cell phone that's distracting, and I guess the things hanging off the rearview mirror could be as well. Uh, let's see. And here we are with more of that uh, SpaceX Starlink stuff. Yeah, I have no idea as to what this guy's logic was about putting this shit here. I guess he just thought, well, I'll just run my business out of my car and I will use this powerful SpaceX dish to get internet all the time so that I can, so that I can never miss my deadlines. You could have mounted it on the on the trunk, on the roof. I get the feeling he might have gotten in trouble regardless. Like the on, the only way I can see this guy getting away with having anything that gets him internet access would be a regular ass antenna or, you know, a These are rare nowadays, but he can he could have just gotten a giant ass antenna. You know, some people just have a giant ass antenna on the back of their car to get radio signals. I guess. Well, that's a, more of a C, that's more of a CB radio um, antenna. But no, seriously, I, it, it says it says the description of the penal of the code that you just read that he can't have anything on the hood. It doesn't say any, and it says he can't have anything on a place that's not approved to mount one. So I'm like, put on the fucking roof or the trunk. You can hmm. mount a spoil. You can mount a spoiler on the back of your car without any issue in California. So that should be fine. I mean, why Maybe. this guy thought this was a good idea, I don't know. No, I, so dumb. I don't know either. He just sticks it on there and just goes, "Yep, nothing, nothing will go wrong." I don't know why half of my face is melting, but I, damn, I've got good internet. It's like I got. Uh, I think I've got a stroke here. Half of my face won't work properly. <laughs> oh, and I can't see. I can't see if I turn right. <laughs> Just why? Like, I admire the ingenuity, but at the same time, I cannot admire the stupidity. Ah, uh, speaking of stupidity, that's the last softcore article of the uh, train wreck tonight. Kind of breeze through the things that we got, but don't worry. We got plenty of stupid in the hardcore material. <laughs> oh boy, we've got plenty of stupid. So we'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back with uh, Trademark's train wreck on Celesti Radio. I'll fan all the time. Except when it's. Ah, uh, just. Wi Fi on the hood. Wi Fi on the hood. I can't make rat turns no more. Well, 
Welcome back, passengers, to Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. Just like last week, we have the fangirl with us again. Yep. And before we get started with the hardcore material, we actually uh, decided to uh, take a look at something that I literally just found uh, while we were on break. Uh, it brings me back to a Patton Oswalt joke, where KFC has this thing called the Double Down. It's basically two strips of chicken with bacon, cheese, and uh, ma- sauce. Uh, sauce in the middle. That's essentially, it. Essentially, KFC thought, let's just get rid of the bread and the chicken Let's get sandwich. rid of the bun. There's enough breading on the chicken itself. Yeah. And we'll just stick bacon in between. So it's a bacon sandwich, but instead of the bread, you get chicken. Yep. And it is Ride literally... Chicken. Fried chicken. It is literally the fattiest, greasiest, most unhealthy thing you could get at KFC until now, apparently. Yeah, because KFC Singapore has unveiled the triple down. What is the triple down, you may ask? Well, it's simple, ladies and gentlemen. They it's added another chicken. A double, but they added another they added another chicken um patty in it. So it's kinda like a whopper. With no bun, yeah. This is, K- this is KFC essentially saying, "Here, let us help you kill yourself via heart attack." Yeah, this would cost you uh, six ninety four in American dollars, while in Singapore it'll cost you nine thirty. <laughs> Just why, why, why does this exist? Anywho. Because right, in Asia okay. they in Asia they perfect the weird flavors and this and the weird food pieces. And this I don't know why Singapore decided they needed three piece of chicken with bacon and sauces in between it. Mm. All right, look, I'm gonna just go a little advocate here, devil's advocate here on behalf of KFC. KFC is comfort food. It was it was built off of the cuisine of the American South um, and the majority of that uh, and the majority of the culture from the American South was um, black slavery and but that's where that's where the majority of the cuisine came from they found all new amazing and delicious ways to make food and it became basically a staple of southern of southern culture so I'm to not quote, saying... to quote the boondock to quote the boondocks a lot of black uh, unfortunately and we apologize to listeners we are a bunch of white people saying this but and yeah. quoting a cartoon but essentially foods that were not originally meant for consumption or used for consumption by the majority of the <clears throat> white slave owners must be real here was left before the slaves to try and utilize in order to make something to eat. And oftentimes that included things that most people don't really like to eat or want to eat, but you can get acquired taste for it. Like Fried chitlins. Or collard greens. Or collard greens. <laughs> so, um, it, it's like, KFC has always been cult, uh, comfort food. They know exactly what they are. Um, they attempted once to try and say that their food is slightly healthy because it's chicken and, and, because, it's, and because it's cooked in a pressure cooker not a deep fat fryer not a deep fat fryer sure. and that didn't last very long so they know what they're about and they're not lying about it in and, your face and they're and they're not and they're not ashamed of it they're like carl's jr carl's jr knows exactly what they're about and they have no shame in it yeah so if you want to do this it's up to you, man. But just go to just Singapore be, to do it. Just, just know what you're, just know what you're getting your ass into, you know. Mm. So, I mean, we can't really fault KFC too much for this because, again, you know what they're about. You know what they're about too. Yeah, and filthy, disgusting man. And saying this as a chunky girl, your food choices are your own. If you feel that you can eat one of the, if you if you have this have sandwiches like this available to you, sandwich in the loosest term, available to you, and you decide to eat it, you know, cool beans. That's you doing you. You eat what you want to eat. Ain't nobody gonna begrudge you this. Yeah, I mean, eat this thing and then get a salad. 
or have a nice light soup. Well, moving on to the articles proper. Time to head for the hardcore material. Oh, man. And, of course, where better to start with the hardcore material than Florida? Ooh, deja vu. Ah, just... Again, no clever segue. Here we go. Florida man tries to steal helicopter after crashing through airport gate. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? Did, so, did no one in the TSA think to stop this? Oh, I'm sure they did. <sighs> this happened June 30th. A Florida man is facing numerous charges following a wild crime spree on Tuesday, June 29th. Authorities said that it all started just after 8 a.m. when Brandon Marty, 31, was involved in a two-car accident. Marty fled the scene of the accident on foot and broke into a nearby home. He stole their car keys and sped away. He drove for about a mile before crashing through the gate at Kissimmee Gateway Airport. After ramming the gate, the car was inoperable, so Marty got out and started running towards a parked helicopter. He was confronted by a security guard who stopped him before taking the helicopter. Instead of flying away, Marty managed to steal a truck and was able to drive away from the airport. Osceola deputies tracked Marty down and took him into custody after he crashed the truck. He was taken to the hospital with injuries that are not considered life-threatening. When... Okay, so let's, let's do a countdown. First offense was leaving the scene of the accident. Yep. Second offense, the break, uh, trespassing, breaking and entering, grand theft auto, fleeing from police, probably speeding on top of that. Plus, let's add in destruction of property when he crashed to the airport. Attempted theft on federal property, let's consider this, because of the airport. Uh, again, more running from police, followed by another bout of grand theft auto, another bout of... Um, I have one more bout of uh, speeding. So yeah, that tracks 11 charges. Yep. Welcome to Grand Theft Auto, the real game. <sighs> when let, Marty... Let me, yes? Let, let's, let me just say this. Grand Theft Auto is not life advice, people. No, it is not. You may continue. Well, when Marty is released from the hospital, he will be taken to the Osceola County Jail, where he will be booked on at least, well, there we go, 11 charges, including carjacking, burglary, battery, and assault of an officer. So, so yeah. not quite all the ones I listed, but yeah, pretty close. And that's where it ends. This is a, here we go, another case of how did we get here? Like, what is this man's story? We're, like, they never dude, tell us. Like, here's the problem. Here's the thing. This is a classic case of dude must have had some other shit going on. Like, he must have had some other heavy shit that he didn't want the cops to catch him with. Possibly drugs. Possibly contraband weapon. Who knows? And as soon as he got into a minor situation which was just a simple crash he's just like fuck it and booked hmm. it could even be just as simple as he was drunk while driving but it happens far too often a dude does something that could have easily just been a simple uh, uh, just a simple fender bender or you know you have a crash you get a DUI, you get your license suspended. You know, it's it's a thing that happens. But he clearly had something bigger that he needed to hide. And so when he realized, fuck, I'm going to get so in so much trouble for this, he ran. Yeah. And I'm looking I'm I'm looking around here. I don't know if this is 100% confirmed. But I think this man is a is a former Miami Hurricane football player, like a former linebacker, apparently. <laughs> then what the fuck? Is, uh, then it's probably drugs. I mean, it, it's it's very possible. But again, yeah. I I don't know a hundred percent if he's actually a linebacker. 
because I don't know. I don't know football. I'm very uh, sports adverse. So but regardless, regardless, mm-hmm. though, this this dude. I just want to know. I just hope we get some more developments on this particular story. Keep an eye on this trade, please, because I want to know what else he gets charged with. Because again, dude, not not everyone who gets into a mi- minor into a minor traffic. There we go. You finally there? Yeah. So sorry about that. Not sure if I'll leave this in the recording, but Discord has been acting like a dick recently and has been, like, randomly dropping out. So all I heard was, it's not often that a football player something something Merkin, Hergen, Flergen. All right, so what I was going to say was, not often that a football player just decides to fucking steal a helicopter, but yeah, here's I, the point. Yeah, again, it's just like, I need... You and I both need to know the context as to how how this happened. We need to know, Fanny. <laughs> so I'm going to say, please. So what I was trying to say before he dropped out was, please, please keep an eye out on this for further developments, and let's report in later uh, if you hear hear or see anything else. Because damn, we gotta know what the hell's happening here. Yeah, please. All right. Next, we got a Wait short. One of the articles. We got a short and sweet article uh, here in the hardcore material. Uh, This one. Hmm. I was hesitant to uh, use this article at first, just the way that the uh, the fucking title of this article is. Listen to this and tell me what the first thing that comes to your mind is. Suspect wanted to pray his way through school. Okay. Yeah. Go on, Fanny. Go on. I'm not going to lie, but that way it could be one of two things. It could either be suspect was a pre- pre- preyed on people d- through his schooling, or the more likely suspect here, given the craziness, dude's literally pre- uh, d- gone on his knees and praying. Uh, neither, actually. Though that last one probably would have been uh, fucking hilarious. Uh, June 30th. A Florida man is behind bars, allegedly trying to pray his way through college. Uh, Raphael Woloski, 18, was arrested Friday on felony charges after allegedly trying to burglarize homes in Vero Beach neighborhood where he lives with his parents. Woloski, carrying a small knife, was apprehended by cops shortly after a caller dialed 911 to report that a male had entered her home through a broken window around 5.50 p.m. That's a scary ass shit. Mm hmm. Woloski was collared after police spotted him walking a few blocks from the victim's residence. During, question- <clears throat> During questioning, Woloski reportedly admitted to committing three burglaries in the neighborhood, including a break in at a residence uh, across the street from his family's home. Woloski told police that he decided to burglarize homes to get money for college. He also claimed that the devil kept tempting him to steal. Oh, boy. Oh, lordy. Charged with a trio of armed burglary counts, Woloski is locked up in the Indian River County Jail in lieu of $75,000 bond. He's scheduled to be arraigned on August 13th. Well. Okay, guys. Ladies and gentlemen out there, there are three things that people do to get through college if they don't want to get student loans or if you do get student loans and you're suddenly in a massive amount of debt. And these are things that everybody does or most everybody does, so no shame. One, part-time job. Yep. Two, Mm -hmm. for those of you who are into uh, this and no judgment here, stripping or exotic dancing. No shame. Three, three, you, you, you open up an Etsy shop. Yep. These or a shop the, of some kind. Or a store, or a shop of some kind. Or just sell crap out of your fucking front yard. You don't go robbing people's houses to pawn their shit. Just, hmm. No. Like, I get no. it. Like, I get you it. College, f- college is fucking expensive as hell these days, isn't it? 
even though it really shouldn't be like a fucking college textbook is about as expensive as the goddamn class it's related to exactly yeah, no i we have had we have all each of us has had to pay dollars for a single book and in my case i had to pay uh and for for stuff we don't even need really need to keep hell i i was forced to pay 80 dollars not only for the Shakespeare te uh, text that I needed for my last Shakespeare class in college, but also a book of plays where we only needed the one play out of it, and it wasn't even a Shakespeare play, it was a contemporary from his time, and it was because the fucking teacher wanted to wank about how well his personal play troupe was going to perform this one singular play out of that playbook, and he wanted free reviews out of out of his out of his uh class. Jeez. Yes, he was that kind of wanker. Oh. So literally, just the one play out of a play uh, out of a book of plays by this author that I'd never heard of until this class, and that book by itself was twenty five dollars. That's why I say 80 bucks total, combining it with the actual Shakespeare uh, text for the class that was it, because it was fucking Shakespeare. So, yeah, textbooks and books for class are expensive as fuck and don't need to be. Yeah, you're you're honestly better off renting from uh, companies Maybe. like, you know, Amazon. You're better, yes, you're better off renting books from online companies or trying to see if another student from another from a previous term has an older edition book available, either that they're trying to give away or that they're willing to sell. Yeah, the chapters might be out. Of might need to look up some extra information for later on, but if most of the same shit is in it, you save some bucks. You don't go robbing grandma's uh, bingo partner down the street because you can't pay for your fucking chemistry book. It's just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and you know, you can't even blame uh, this guy in spite of his uh, stupid excuse of, oh, the devil made me do it. It's just, It's just the way these classes are fucking arranged to have their prices and all that even even online classes go for like over 300 bucks depending on what you're studying this is absolutely ridiculous moving on to our last article for the night and speaking of ridiculous oh boy we've got a banger tonight we've got a banger of a final article and of course it's florida a lot of the, these fucking last articles have been about Florida. Oh, man. It's a special occasion tonight. Florida. Florida yes, man is. is working overtime. Florida men, actually. We've got yes. two Florida men. Oh, man. You know that gag from The Simpsons? Which with gag? The, where there's this uh, old man with his pants around his ankles like, Old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she oh, used yeah. to be. Well, naked old guys arrested for public tryst. <laughs> That's the awkward laugh of a man who uh, desperately wants to say, Why are you showing me this trademark? July well, more 2nd. Like, more like this is the laugh of a guy who, who has humor in this as well as, well, at least this guy. Uh, at least sometimes, uh, I'll, you know, if 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 this guy had some pretty damn big uh big boats of confidence. Mm. So, if you need further proof that Florida has fully emerged from the uh, pandemic doldrums, two nude old guys were arrested uh, around July second after being spotted. Uh, after pe police spotted them having public sex. Oh. With each other? Yes. Okay, one, don't be bashing on the gays. Of course Two, not. Two, not. Okay. It's oh. pu public sex. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. And that, and two, guy, again, I agree with Shirley. Come on, guys. 
public sex. I know you. I know y'all want to show your pride and everything, but come on. Come There's on. A, there. There is a thing as too proud, <laughs> unfortunately. Exactly. There's there's a time and a place. This was neither. Mm hmm. So according to an arrest report, a St. Petersburg cop, cop caught Daniel McClearly, who clearly didn't know any better. He's 60 years old, and Donald Engstrom, 59, engaged in sexual acts while completely naked and in public view. The duo was called at around 10.25 p.m. in the vicinity of a small park. After the pair was arrested, Engstrom reportedly admitted that they were in fact having sex. No shit. Okay. I mean... Good on you for that, owning up. That, yeah. Good on you for admitting it, but why? But clearly, and Angstrom were arrested for indecent exposure and booked into the county jail on the misdemeanor charge. Both men were released July 1st on their own recognizance. The report notes indicates... Uh, sorry. The report notes that an indication of alcohol influence was direct detected by the arresting officer. Uh, oh, there really... we go. There we go. Uh, well, th apparently this isn't, uh, this is, this is not an uncommon thing. While Engstrom's rap sheet includes a, uh, sole DWI conviction, McCle McClearly has an extensive criminal history. Oh, He's got convictions for battery, resisting arrest, burglary, theft, domestic battery, battery on a law enforcement officer, cocaine possession, trespassing, drunk driving, disorderly conduct, pro probation violation, and leaving the scene of an accident. <sighs> well, now he's got indecent exposure to... Uh, now he's got decent, ex decent, indecent exposure and public, <laughs> and public debauchery. I love your little slip up there. Decent exposure. There's a decent amount of exposure. <laughs> Uh, indecent exposure and again pu public debauchery. Or lewd acts and public, yes. whatever you want to call it. Yes. Again, again, this is the Will Smith uh fucking meme. I like this boy's energy. He's a little confused, but I like his energy. Just again, too proud, too proud. <laughs> like I'm not bashing on the homosex on the homosexuals. Not at all. Not. In fact, I'm not bashing on the LGBTQ community. Like, honestly, they I have mean, my hell, full support. There's two yeah, hell, there's two bi people in this chat, and yeah, you hello. have three guesses. And you have three guesses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, although one of the things that I was confused about, like, when I heard this, because, like, I've been actually seeing this a lot, and I'm just like, I thought like, you were supposed to cool off the older you got or some shit. Uh, Apparently not. These guys have plenty of steam. You would be surprised. I've actually listened to just this morning. Actually, I I listened to an episode of uh, Excuse Me, That's Illegal by uh, Leroy Luna, and it was about a man and a woman in I believe the UK, I think, who were on a train heading home after having an ex uh, exorbitant amount of alcohol, and um. The man in front of God and all of his creation just got on his knees and went to work, shall we say. Oh! In nom, front nom, of nom, children! Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> oh, God, no. Don't do it in front of the kids. Yeah, Ew. so... Not cool. Not cool, dude. So, yeah, he... That is just one of many examples of, like, old people, surprisingly, they don't give up that easily. <laughs> Sometimes they get a little randy with their old age, and they just go like, "Fuck it." I mean, but that's the point, though. That's the point we're trying to make, though. Please don't do this in public. You're old, you're old enough to know better. Yeah, please, just you're old enough to know better. Wait till you get home, or go and meet in a hotel if you're going with a random stranger. Ah, uh, just man, 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 man. I got nothing else. It's just like. Why? Cause. Well, this was interesting. <laughs> yep. I look forward to the case report. Or however Sherlock said it in BBC. Anywho, that's it for this episode of Trademark's Trainwreck. Thank you for listening. A little bit uh, quick this week. Nothing really uh, amazingly stupid happened uh, this week. I mean, 
that one with the apparent former uh, Miami Hurricane linebacker or whatever it was stealing, trying to steal a helicopter. That was probably the craziest thing tonight. Again, still need to find information on that one. But yeah, other than that, pretty decent night. Uh, once again, folks, thank you for listening to Trademark Strainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio all fandom all the time. With me here tonight has been Sherlock. Yes, I have been here. And the fangirl. I don't know why I keep coming back. <laughs> we missed you. Anyway, uh, folks, our theme was created by, Co- uh, Mayor of X. I almost said Court Awesome. No, she created our banner art for YouTube and the episode on YouTube, which... If you're listening on YouTube, I would uh, request that you like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And if you're curious about any of our social media links, you can find all of them, including for Mayor of X and Court Awesome, as well as all the links for all the articles we discussed. You can find all those in that in the YouTube description below. My name is Trademark, and good night. <laughs>